So I've had a number of you guys reach out to me and, and, and asking this, basically variations of this question. Why am I so down on the stock market? Why am I so uh, against stocks and bonds? I talk about Genesis Gold, who are a sponsor of this channel. They do a fantastic job moving people out of stocks and bonds into, uh, into silver, gold, platinum coins that in your retirement account are yours that you'll take distribution of those at. Jonathan and his team do a fantastic job. I keep hearing from those of you who have worked with him uh, about how very non-pressure and just extremely helpful and informative he, he and his team is. You can find them down in the description down below. But why do I keep saying get out of stocks and bonds? Why do I keep saying it's more risky than you imagine it is? Stocks are not really down that much. Now, they are down from their high of 17% down. So if you bought at the top, you're, you've lost 17%. Now, if you failed to sell your stocks at the top, in general, uh, the S&P is down 17%, and the NASDAQ's even more than that. But everything else is crashing. Like, stocks are down a little bit, but they're just wobbling back and forth. Stocks and the market haven't yet gotten the message how bad things are. Now, I understand that this channel, uh, we do kind of look for and focus in on the news that's a little more negative. Um, whereas we have a lot of the, the mainstream financial markets out there all being like, it's so wonderful, everything's fine, and nothing's going to go wrong. We can keep doing whatever we want to do, and we'll never actually provoke World War III. We can go out and we can abuse as many countries as we want, as we want to, and it'll be fine. We can keep printing money until the ponies come home, and it'll be fine. And I keep telling you, no, no, it's not. And I show you the evidence of why it's not. We try to sell, tell the truth here, unlike a lot of people on the internet, a lot of people on the televisions and all that kind of stuff like that. And I know that's why a lot of you watch this channel. I try to bring you real information, actionable information, so that you can kind of be ahead of the curve. Uh, when we showed up at Asbury University uh, for the revival there, a lot of you were kind of like, why are you there? That was day four. That was day four of... Um, we, we, we beat Tucker Carlson to, uh, to interviewing the student uh, president there. We, we spoke with faculty members, which other uh, organizations were not able to even do by the time that they got there. We beat Tucker Carlson by like, what, uh, three or four days uh, to the scoop. We scooped them. I, I, that's going to be a... Uh, that's going to be something that I'm going to wear as a badge of pride for a while, just uh, scooping Tucker Carlson and, and Glenn Beck. Uh, they're, they're good guys. Um, they, they put out a lot of good information. And, but just seeing those trends, and, and this channel has a bit of a reputation for doing that, of breaking news stories rather quickly and uh, getting out in front of things and recognizing things that are going to be a big deal by connecting the dots. But the markets, the markets are literally teetering on the edge of, of falling. And, and people have become so acclimated to when the stock market is down, you just buy it. You buy the dip and it's just going to go back up again because stocks only go up. And friends, that's not true. Now, if you look at the U.S. stock market back for a long ways and you're like, yeah, it is true. But look at other countries' stock markets. And... Look at other countries' stock markets in relation to the strength of their currency. Because that's, that's where you really get I mean, one of the best uh, stock markets out there was Venezuela. The Zimbabwe stock market did awesome as well. Until you realize how badly their currencies crashed. So even though they made a, a killing, they put in tens of thousands of dollars maybe, and in the end, even though they made a killing, they could only buy a loaf of bread with it. And that's the kind of situation you need to be aware of. But profits out there, corporate profits are down. Housing, housing sales are just crashing. Houses are not, retail, um, retail's not buying houses. Office, offices, uh, commercial real estate is 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 coming down hard, fast. Insiders, you know, like CEOs, CFOs, people actually look at the balance sheet of those companies. They're not buying their company's stock. They're selling their company's stock. More and more. 
Why is that? The people that actually can see the numbers for themselves don't like the numbers. That should scare you. Institutional purchases, so the banks, the banks that can kind of look at the numbers from the back end and who really know what they're doing and they're really looking out for making money, they are getting out of the markets like it's a piece of dung on fire. That's, that's how they're treating it. Every time it goes back up a little bit, they're, they're the ones selling. The smart money, the bankers, the ones who are ready to sell their own grandmothers for, a, uh, for a, uh, an angle and make more money. Bankruptcies are up. Corporate bankruptcies and personal bankruptcies. We're having defaults on car loans. We're having foreclosures on houses. It's all picking up significantly. And yet we keep getting told that everything's fine out there. The layoffs are picking up dramatically. Countries and central banks are finding themselves painted into a corner where if they print more money, the inflation rate is going to spike even higher. And so they don't want to print more money, but how do they pay for things if they don't print more money? The United States is up against its uh, debt ceiling, so it's playing all sorts of fiduciary games out there in order to, uh, but they're not borrowing more money. And because of that, because of that, um, we're seeing uh, inflation kind of hold it, held in check just a little bit from that. But if you think that they're exercising any sort of discipline whatsoever out there financially, you're absolutely wrong. Everything in the markets is going down. Bonds are interest rates are going up, which means the value of bonds is going down. I know it's one of those inverse things. It's kind of weird. Um, whereas stocks go up when their value goes up, right? But stocks are holding steady. Bonds are crashing. All the institutional investors are just freaking out. The banks are upset and worried. The people that actually look at the numbers are worried. Should you be worried about the markets? Um, you should talk to a financial advisor and find out. Um, I'm not a certified financial advisor and I can't give you any advice. But I'll tell you what I'm doing. The only money I have in the stock market is actually in gold and silver streaming companies. They produce gold and silver and they own a lot of assets in the ground that are gold and silver. Those are extremely good protection against inflation. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's leveraged basically against inflation. So if inflation goes up, those gold and silver rocks, if they don't go up in value at all um, against the dollar, um, my investment goes up significantly against the dollar because it's not about having X number of gold and silver. It's about having access to a lot more gold and silver that as the price goes up, more of that's going to come out. It's, it's one of the best inflation hedges that I, that I know of. So I'm betting on inflation taking off and, and potentially even the stock market crashing down. And my, my, uh, my streaming stocks may go down a bit, but the thing is that they're backed up by so much gold and silver that's in the ground, that's coming out of the ground, that it's just, it's uh, the intrinsic value of it is pretty significant. But I still have more money that's actually in physical silver, which is where I think the, the, the best place to be is. So I can only tell you what I'm doing. I'm an accountant by trade. I look at the markets and uh, I spend a lot of the time looking at news and reading through financial reports and stuff like that because I'm weird like that. And I try to, try to clue you guys in as best I can on that. I, I'm extremely skeptical and extremely worried about the stock market. And I say worried as in um, I don't trust it. Not that like I stay up at night and go, oh, the stock market, the stock. I'm not in it, so I don't care. I don't really care. Now, I care because other people are going to be impacted significantly by it, but I've positioned myself out of it. Just like a lot of us are positioning ourselves so that we're stable and secure 
regardless of what happens out there with a lot of things. So that's my two cents on it. That's why, I mean, I think that if you are in stocks and bonds in your retirement account, I think you would do well to move it over to physical gold, physical silver. Um, I know there's, there's ETFs and stuff like that, like SLV and um, GLD, which is the silver and the gold ETFs, but I don't trust them. I don't trust them. Um, you're basically just getting a piece of paper from a company saying, uh, a bank saying that you own this. Um, so I, I, I'm, I think it's better actually having the, the physical metal itself as opposed to uh, that. Now, I, I do have the streaming companies, but uh, they literally have contracts in their hands with all these mining companies. And those mining companies will do quite well and uh, they'll be able to fulfill their obligations. Um, so, and it's diversified. So anyway, that's my two cents on things. Um, if you found this video useful or helpful, um, you can always check out another video from me right here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you later. Steve Poplar out.